Hello, we, uh, Richard. We have today the Arcana Institute the, the privilege of, of, of uh, having this discussion about the new book of Richard Jones from Carnegie Europe. And the book is uh, The Uncertain Legacy of, of Crisis, You Foreign Policy Faces the Future. It's a very, very interesting book about, well, how uh, Richard uh, considered the, the new global order seen from a European perspective in the context of the, of the crisis of the last four or five years. So, well, my, my first question would be, Richard, uh, can you summarize uh, that view about uh, Europe facing the, the world in the context of the, the most serious crisis Europe has, has uh, faced in the 60 years of history of European integration? Yeah, I mean, the starting point for the book is that over the last five years, the EU's been in crisis management mode, uh, focused on the internal issues of the economic crisis. But this crisis is beginning to affect Europe's foreign policy as well, the way that the EU is acting in uh, global politics. Some, some people would say the crisis has uh, fatally weakened the EU on the global stage. It's undermined the unity between member states. There's been a kind of fragmentation, even a renationalization of uh, foreign policy to, to member state capitals. Uh, the book argues that the change has been a little bit more subtle. A lot of the impacts of the crisis are negative. They leave the EU more weakened. Uh, member states are giving more priority to their short-term interests in a way that is detrimental to European unity. But at least in some areas you can see uh, more commitment to um, uh, cooperation in European foreign policy and some effort on the part of the EU to rethink the way that the EU needs to operate in, to in, uh, through its foreign policy to defend its long-term interests, which look quite different coming out of the crisis compared to the situation in 2008. So your assessment is not so pessimistic or negative about uh, how the European Union uh, has behaved during the crisis, uh, including foreign policy of the European Union, but it is not uh, optimistic either, uh, and, uh, or positive. So you are um, recommending uh, to the European Union to, to strengthen the, 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 as a global actor, um, but well, the, the point is what is to be done, what the European Union should do, and the member states uh, to really uh, be uh, realized that the, 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 the world is, is so complex that you have Russia, we have China, we have emerging power, we have the complex relation with the United States. So, well, what's your, your suggestion about what, what can we do? Well, I, think, I think we shouldn't so, um, underestimate the, the effect of the crisis. It, it is having a very um, debilitating effect on Europe and we shouldn't, we shouldn't take that uh, lightly. But I think it, my argument is that the, the very gravity of the crisis to some extent has had a kind of catalyzing effect on uh, member states that do recognize that we, we do, at least in some areas, need more cooperation um, at the European level and that to, to defend its interests in a, in a post-crisis world we do need some kind of more outward looking projection of European influence um, at the global level. I think the challenge for the EU is that it needs to uh, clearly pursue its commercial interests in order to help it out of the uh, crisis but at the same time to defend the kind of multilateral principles that e even more after the crisis than before the crisis are es essential to defending Europe's place and influence uh, in the world. Uh, we also need to understand that uh, countries around the world are perhaps a bit more selective in the kind of um, cooperation they want from Europe today so we need to think about how Europe can exert influence beyond simply replicating the successes of its own model of integration. It has a lot of work to do to recapture its kind of normative appeal as a, as a model of cooperation to other countries in the world. A and we need to deepen the transatlantic relationship as well, not just through the TTIP, not just through the prospect of a free trade area with the US, but for the US and the EU to begin thinking together what the longer term impact of the crisis is on the functioning of what we might call the liberal world order and how the US and the EU can cooperate more effectively at that kind of big strategic level to defend the kind of global order we want to see over the longer term. But for, those, for, for this liberal world order, is all the United States and Europe to defend it or there are other democracies or other actors in the world 
who can also be invited to that. Well, I think one thing the EU has done well over the last three or four years is it, it's begun to give much more importance to its strategic partnerships with the rising powers. And the rising powers are not just China and Russia, but they count amongst them uh, some very successful democracies as well, Brazil, South Africa, Korea, um, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we should be working with those rising democracies on issues of a slightly broader significance than just our bilateral commercial relations with those countries. They may not share the same kind of foreign policy principles in their entirety that the EU adheres to, but there, are, there should be scope there for working on a more strategic level with those rising democracies in a way that helps us reshape the global order in a way that defends European interests. Okay, so your book is, is strategic, is looking well, with much ambition, but well, we have a short-term challenge in Ukraine, Russia, Crimea. Uh, what does the, the book say about, about this challenge? It, 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 not exactly precisely on, on the crisis, but well, uh, any lessons to be learned for that, considering the... What the well, book? I think one general lesson, without getting into specific policy recipes on, on um, Ukraine and Russia, is that the EU tends to have, and I think this is generally recognised now, the EU tends to have prioritised a rather technocratic approach to its neighbourhood. It does exert a lot of influence through its trade instruments, its development, cooperation, uh, cooperation on its own kind of rules and regulations. That clearly is important and it will continue to be important, but we need to supplement that now with a level of much more engaged high diplomacy. Uh, the situation in Crimea renders that much more um, urgent, much more imperative. The EU has begun to move in that direction, uh, but it will need to do a lot more um, uh, to have any kind of impact on the situation in Ukraine, both vis-a-vis -vis Russia, um, but also in the, in the precise way in which it helps Ukraine develop its political system. That for me, I think, will be the key in determining how the crisis develops. Okay, so thank you very much, Richard Young from Carnegie Europe. Congratulations for your book. Thank you.